Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Between a Pot and a Hard Place. I'm Stephen Colton. And I'm Chris Kirkpatrick. And I almost messed up the title of this show. I noticed that. That's, been doing that's, it. That's, you don't normally do that. No, I've been doing it for like almost, you know, t- in total, almost two years now. And I'm yeah. just sitting here like, what? Like, I forgot the name of the show. Um, but yeah, we have a special show tonight. Um, we really do. We really we're do. Wait, we're waiting for our guests to join us. And um, <clears throat> to, from we were on their show a while back. And now they're coming on our show. And we're here to discuss the season finale of Superman and Lois. Um, and those, um, it's the Great Geeks debate. Um and they're coming in just a little bit to talk about it. We talked about the last two episodes before they aired on their show. And now after the finale, they're coming over to talk to us on ours. Yeah, I, I love it that we are we are welcome to being them on our turf. So. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and show these little things real quick that I have okay. here before they show come in. Show and tell time. Because I kind of want to like – I don't want to – have the show be completely different than it normally is. I want to right. still show my goofy stuff. I'm not going to do voices with the Joker, but Aww. um, I was maybe I will, maybe I will. Let's see. Um, you better do it. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to go with Supergirl because that's terrible. Um, but yeah, I got this Marvel coloring book tonight. I found it at, at a Walmart, and I was like, man, I have to get this. I don't know. I just I never I haven't used an actual coloring book in a thousand years. Um, I, might have, I might have been twelve the last time that I had one. And of course, I mean you've got to you got to get crayons. Seriously, and you got the sixty four yeah. pack. And it has the sharpener in it. Um, but I also wanted to show off real quick before we bring our guests on. Uh, I bought this uh, yesterday. I went on a trip to a, a flea market in Tennessee. I went. I, we we go there semi regularly, like once a month, and. I found this at a comic. Not, it was a store that has comics, not a comic book store, but they have all kinds of things. Um, this was Arrow, Volume One, and okay. this this was. I don't know if it's a novelization, not a novelization, but a graphic novel of the actual show or an extended story. I haven't read it yet, but it is based on the TV show, uh, written of course by Mark Guggenheim and Andrew Kreisberg and Mike Grell, or Mike Grell did the art. I think. I don't know. I uh, I've, I've flipped through and it's got some decent artwork in it. You know, um, it kind of cool. it kind of fits the tone of Arrow, um, and it, it's really cool. It's four bucks, four bucks. Okay, nice. Well, all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, Arrow season one is uh, one of my favorite seasons ever. It is, so, and I don't go know, wrong with that. I don't know if this is set on season one. It's volume one of the book, which I'm assuming is near the first of the show. Um, but I I need to read that. And I'm going to color some Spider-Man while I read Arrow. And we're going to talk about Superman and Lois. It's a weird yeah. combination. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to be joined first, it looks like, by Misty from Great Geeks Debate. Great. Uh, how, are you, how are you doing? Hey. Good. How about all of you? We're good. doing good. Yeah. That's yeah, good. Yeah. I, I had to show off my coloring book real quick. That was a last-minute decision. I'm like – I haven't colored in a coloring book in forever, but when when you see a superhero coloring book, you have to buy it. True. I mean, <laughs> you don't come don't, out that often. I don't know if I even know how to use crayons anymore, but we'll see how we, we'll see how it goes. Don't know how to use crayons? It's like riding a bicycle, right? You you never forget. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. And how I was are talking, you guys? doing good. Yeah, doing good here too. It's been a it's been a busy weekend for me. I've been uh, helping to take care of my dad this weekend, and so uh, that has been that has been busy. Uh, my my mom's been out of town, and so uh, anyway, that's that's kept me occupied this weekend. But um, looking forward to our discussion. We had had so much fun on your show when we were on <laughs> talking about Superman and Lois, and so we were like, yes, we get to have them on our show on our turf. Okay, yeah. that is my cool friend. I know, I sent the link. I sent it from our, our show page, and I know I was talking earlier from my personal page, but the our show page is automatically logged in on my computer. I'm like, I don't I don't want to go and try to like unlog oh, and no, log it, in. It, she told me. So I know. Oh, wow, okay. I know she knows. Well, that's, I mean, it's fine. We can, uh, we can just talk about coloring. I can sit here. While we wait, I will sit here and color Captain America for everyone. This is like Bob Ross. Okay, now we're going to paint a happy little tree over this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh man. Yeah. Sometimes I goof off and have Joker pop in and give his opinion. Um, and then, and then Supergirl gets mad and she comes in and yells at him. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, he he got it all, props here tonight. Yeah. We got it all handled down. Yeah. The heck is my friend. Come back, Chloe. She's the one that said, hey, Misty, they're up. And I was like, oh, yay. I really wish I knew Mark Hamill and he could come to my house and sit off to the side and do the voice for the Joker while I do this. And like, <laughs> oh, man. I need to oh, stop. She, she's she's uh, she's adulting for a second here because oh she is. Well, unfortunately, the second she told me the link was up, everyone came downstairs. They're all supposed okay. to. Okay. They've been told like since uh, Tuesday <laughs> that mom was busy and wife, but uh, apparently, you know that's how it goes. I tell you, mom and wife is. Busy and everybody says ha ha ha. Right, that doesn't mean anything. Ha ha ha! Yeah, shut up. What? Mom's busy? No, mom doesn't get busy. Mom is all about ah, me. Here That's we go. It. Now we're we're gonna welcome Chloe to the show. There she is. Hello, Hello. Chloe. Hello. Hey. Now oh, my now. bright yeah my bright lamp is like shining now. It's like I hope it's not too <laughs> distracting. Oh no. no, my brick wall and now my real room. So there right. we go. Right, right. Don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chloe, was... welcome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and she speaks. Yeah. I do. Oh, I have yeah. a voice. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I know that that shouldn't surprise me, but uh, the last time we were on your show, you were you were like a mime, right? <laughs> like we had to read you based on your facial expressions. So I, I, I was I was her voice and right, she was messaging right. all of us in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the unfortunate part of uh, really bad allergies is when they hit you don't have much control. So yeah. Well, yeah. we are we are glad that your voice is back and that, that both of you are here to join us here tonight. Uh, you know what? I know that you got we're really here to go and talk about Superman and Lois. Yeah. So or what, what if you, yeah, and, Barnes, and what if? That's always a good topic. Yeah, I, we, we definitely aren't <laughs> just going to be tied to one one topic. And if you guys have followed uh, Titans or um, or Stargirl, we might throw that in there too. I so. haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Right. We can and I think I'm a little two. bit I think I'm a little bit overwhelmed with with like uh, Captain Marvel being not my favorite. So I've <laughs> kind of stayed away from anything that looks like. Uh, Superman. I even messaged Chloe the other day when they, the Eternals released and said, when did we get Superman? He doesn't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit her and the whole Icarus is Superman thing and me going, no, nah, it's just tropes, dude. They're, they're right. different. But right. no, I was no. just, uh, I was upset. I'm like, nope, nope. Superman, that's my boy and he is not in the MCU yet. <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're trying. They're really trying. I mean, they they really did set up Captain Captain Marvel to be their version of Superman. Superman yeah. yeah, yeah. But Actually, they're nothing alike. Did you realize that we've Chloe and I have talked about this many times? Her name is Supergirl. Is Carol or no? Cara Danvers. Mm -hmm. Carol Danvers is actually um, Captain Marvel. The problem is those two characters came about because back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, when these are all being written, the content creators swapped between Marvel Studios or Marvel Comics and DC. And so you have characters who are just copies of everybody because exactly. these writers were too yeah. lazy to come up with new ones. Kind of like, um, kind of like uh, Deathstroke and Deadpool, mm -hmm. right? Same, same creator, very similar characters. In fact, you got Slade Wilson and Wade Wilson. Yeah. So yep. good example of that. Yes. So exactly. I, as far as as far as Superman and Lois is concerned, I've got to say that going into these last two episodes, my expectations were way, way, way up here. Oh yeah. And, and I, you know, whatever, whatever we, yeah, exactly. And I was like, I don't know how we're ever going to live up to the hype. That we built up they didn't. for the show. They failed completely. They failed completely. 
I, I was mad mm. about it the minute I watched it. I messaged Chloe about it. I was disdained on Twitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. And uh, I haven't changed my mind about it. Okay. I, haven't changed. So I literally told, literally said the writers did all this great writing and it went poof. And you're like, why? Why did you do that, writers? <laughs> why? So, uh, Misty, I, I want you to. I'm going to give you a moment to kind of explain why you hated it so much. Uh, to me, they had ramped up this whole season as being really strong, and they had had at least three episodes over the course of this 15 episode series that could have easily been a season finale. Right. Easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they at each turn kept wrapping up the season really it's just like okay you wrap that up okay you wrap that up what are you doing because you keep wrapping these stories a lot um and by the time it got to the episode 14 i was like we knew that when we had previously talked that one of the boys was going to get kidnapped and mm -hmm. obviously one of them did and at that point, you have Clark going around the world trying to find him and doing all this stuff, but you also leave Lois uh, to be friends with um, John Henry Irons. Knowing this history, they all know the history now, at least on one side of it. So then we finally get Clark to finding his son, and it was just so easy for... Uh, it happened. It was too easy, you know, to knock him out. It was too easy to get to get a hold of John. It was too easy mm -hmm. to get through to him. And then you you flash forward to the finale where there's a lot happening. And, and not gonna lie, I was very finely impressed with the writers for doing Kyle his due diligence as a first responder. Um I had been very grumpy and very upset this whole season for him being portrayed in a negative light consistently and then him being a bad dad and then him getting possessed. So it was like a constant, I didn't like Kyle. But the one thing that Kyle did have is what they finally showed in the finale. He may not have all of Clark's superpowers, but when things went down, he was the one that went out and went to go get someone. And he was doing his job. And that's what Lana said. He's going to go do his job. And very easily that back, that backdraft with the the uh, fire could have killed Kyle. Yeah. And uh, he does the Superman carry. I don't know what else to call it, where he carries that person out. And you finally yeah. see, finally, they give Kyle this actual arc about his actual job. And they're not making fun of him or putting him, what he does for real work, off to the side to make him a pseudo villain. However, mm. then we go to the whole, okay, now Jordan has more powers. I, at the moment, it wasn't Jordan. It was um, the, what's his name's dad. Yeah, and Zero. We're, they were, yeah. And we're yeah. dealing with more powers. We're dealing with getting all this stuff. And Jonathan is absolutely brave, absolutely awesome. He did shoot his own brother. Um, and Lois is doing this all in this brain. Yes, it's, it's, it's a good sight. And, and she's right in the fact that she went through his brain and she'd been navigating it his whole life. I also kind of feel like Clark got sucker punched again, because that is the same way that Jordan treated her or treated him in the first half of the season. So we finally get to the whole Jordan is released thing. Jordan's not that strong. It Clark could barely fight off Zod and Clark is a full-blown Kryptonian and mm -hmm. it and magically we just wrap this up in a perfect little bow that Lois was able to get through to him when in reality I don't know that it was Lois at all she may have helped but I think it was John mm -hmm. and John well he woke up because of John he everything that happened was because of John but John gets very little credit as usual um for defending his mom, for being willing to shoot his own brother, for for everything that he's done this whole season, he's still not getting any credit. It's it's like he's the forgotten character. And then I had the stupid realization: they're probably going to kill off Jonathan Kent because Jonathan <laughs> Kent always dies. And uh, I was a little bit pissed about that. So yeah. 
you made everything too easy. Everything was so easy. The rest of this whole season, up until like the last three episodes, everything was hard. Everything these guys fought for, it, nothing came easy. Nothing at all. And then they wrote it as if we don't know what to write. Uh, and then when you finally get to the end, it's so cliche. I called it, what, back in episode three? Was it, Chloe? I said, oh, they're going to end up having Lois get very close to John Henry Irons, and they're probably going to bring the kid back. And mm. they did, and they did. And so now you know that Clark's marriage is going to be on the rocks because eventually that's what's going to happen. And uh, it was just like, no, you didn't have to go that route. You could have been a lot smarter and a lot better, and you could have written it so much more dil diligently. And instead you threw it away with the one trope that I don't think that any of the people who are watching it for the adults, not the, the teens, wanted. None of the adults wanted to see it. And you're doing it anyway, just because you're the CW and it's the typical trope. And that, that I just, I don't like when writers get lazy at the end of the season, just because they can get lazy, especially when you know the quality that they produced for the other 13 or, mm -hmm. you know, 12, 13 episodes. So that was my biggest grief with it. Yeah. I will. I want to just uh, say that I agree with you completely in regards to the Cushings. I mean, you realize that they really had been beaten down. They had been abused. The entire town blamed them for everything bad that was happening and they were ready to leave. And at that moment, when, when, you know, nobody else was standing up, they, they made the choice to go and fight for, for the people, right? They were going to be the helpers. Yeah. And I think that, I, I thought that was a, a very heroic moment mm -hmm. where they really showed their, their character. Yes, yes, Kyle um, definitely show, showed his character as a firefighter, but it was the entire family who stepped up together and said, you know, we're not running away from this. Um, it's our it's home. Why, it is. It's our home. We're going to fight for it. And I thought that was a really great moment. Definitely. I, I agree with that. And uh, it was, the, that was, that was the one redeeming quality that I was pleasantly surprised about. Mm -hmm. I had zero complaints about what they finally did to the Cushings to finally make it so that this family isn't just the black sheep because you knew all along that Lana was never a bad person. And you, Sarah, she was a victim of her situation, her father's neglect. And then this whole season, he really wasn't himself. And I mean, he was for a short period of time, but he was continually a failure to her. Um, it's one thing mm -hmm. if you see these kids, like the Kent kids who didn't have dad because dad was saving the world. He was saving the world on a high scale, but they're, but, but Kyle also was saving the world on a very little community basis. So they both had missing dads per exactly, se. And while Jonathan was well adjusted, Jordan was not. And the Cushing girls, it seems like the younger one is just a, whatever. She's kind of indifferent to it. So Sarah obviously is older and, and had more effect from her. It's from it. So yeah, I actually forgot the younger sister existed. Um, <laughs> it was like it was like <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> she she's a hundred percent like the the sister who magically appeared and then disappeared and then came back when she was needed and then disappeared. It was like, where does she go all the time? You know, like yeah. even when they're having, she was there for breakfast, I think, but never for the dinners, except for when Sarah got kidnapped and then magically she's there because Sarah needed to babysit someone. It was almost like she was the neighbor's kid who just came over every now and then. Right. It wasn't, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, it kind of reminded me of like a reverse Judy Winslow from, you know, Judy Winslow and Family Matters disappeared completely one day and never came back. Yeah. And she was gone and then magically showed up again. It's like, who are you? Who is this kid? Like, did they find her on the street? Like, what? Oh, it's their daughter. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. It's like so, Agatha. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to come and visit. Now I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. All right. So Chloe, do you? I, I guess I want to ask. Do you, are you? Uh, do you agree with Misty? Are you? Did you uh, not like the finale, or uh, what did you think? 
I kind of like the finale, but I mean, this is also me coming from not being a huge Superman fan, I guess. Um, I like the Kyle Redemption arc. I kind of was okay with the fact that they allowed the general his time to, to basically redeem himself, though that started the episode before. Um, I think they did start to go into, it was almost like they rushed the last episode. Like, Mm -hmm. like Misty had said, there had been so many times before where it could have been a good season finale. Like they did it much better. This one just seemed very rushed in the last episode. Nothing seemed to happen for the first 30 ish minutes. And then everything got shoved into the end. And you're like, why didn't you just do another episode if you were going to do that at that point or separate it back into the previous episode? You know, you could have taken stuff out of there. Um, Mm -hmm. The whole Jordan Jonathan thing, I agree with the fact that they should have given Jonathan a bit more due with bringing Jordan back. Um, with the whole Clark finding him so easily, um, that was kind of on that was kind of part of the plan, him being able to find him. So he wasn't able to find him until he was. Will they keep all of Jordan's powers? I don't know. I was also a little upset with the fact he didn't tell Sarah because there was that perfect moment at the end where yeah. he could have told Sarah. Um, I think but Jonathan told her. Too. I think Jonathan told her. You just didn't see it. It went off screen because Jonathan got Probably. that very determined look in his eyes. Like he was going to tell her and there was not a single person or adult that was going to stop him. Mm-hmm. You'll find that out next season. But I still would have preferred, like, if Jordan had in that moment said something too. Like, even if it was Sarah yeah. just suddenly saying, I know, I still would have preferred something. Right. Do I think anything is going to come between the Lois and John Henry Irons? I don't think there'll be anything between those two, but I think there, the conflict will probably be between Lois and the daughter because that is her daughter, even mm-hmm. if it wasn't her who gave birth to her. Um, I think that's where a lot of the conflict is going to come and probably her with the rest of the the, the Kent family. Except the for boys. John, because John had bonded with her in the mobile, even though he thought she was dead. I think John is not going to have a problem. It was Jordan who was giving her the death stare at the end of that show with Clark looking like a little bit of an eyebrow at the situation. John, mm-hmm. Jonathan was like, oh, like, hey, I I have a feeling that if it comes to anything like that, I think Jonathan will have a perspective of what she is like. And she turns out to be very different from what he thinks. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if they go just the route that, uh, that Jonathan and her get along very well right off the bat and kind of alienate Jordan, then they're going to go into the whole Jordan is, going to continue on in the evil streak that was kind of put into him. Do you which honestly I, that that's not going to happen? Come <laughs> on. And it's, it's the evil twin. He's always <laughs> been the evil twin. It's not going to change. Yeah. You, you, you never know like which, what direction they're going to go. Is he going to become like his dad and be good and then take Jonathan on the other range? Cause you started to see that towards the end too, where Jonathan just kept feeling more and more like, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Um, and the only thing he had that was good with him was what John Henry Irons is teaching him. Well, we know that most of the evil people don't have the superpowers. They just have the intelligence and the ability to create weapons against the super people. So if so it does go anyway. you think going to become a new Lex Luthor? I don't no. know. No, I don't no. think he's going to go the Lex yeah. Luthor way. But I'm still sitting here going, if you're going to look at who, who of the, t- if either of them become evil, who would it be? Jordan. I don't think it would be Jordan, but I don't honestly it'd think it'd be. I don't think it'd be Jonathan either. But now you're throwing in a third kid into the family. Who knows? I think that's what's going to happen. I think third kid and old and and John are going to go off and have a good old time, and Jordan's going to get isolated. And Sarah's not exactly the happiest person in the world. So between them, they're, they both can be kind of destructive. It would be great. It'd be good. It would be good. I was kind of hoping, like you know, we were talking about, we didn't get to see Jordan kind of like tell sarah about it i was kind of hoping to see him while being possessed attack her so she mm-hmm. is forced to see like oh my god how long have you been able to do this you know and like she's all scared and when at the end of the episode he comes up to her 
oh god, and she's so scared of him, and then he has to explain all of it. That mm. would have been nice to have. I think that they made a mistake in leaving everybody alive. Yeah, somebody needed to die. I I I, I know that the general had a redemption arc. Uh, but no, I still think he should have died in the car crash. Uh, that was right. the I, perfect place. I, I, don't think, I, don't think he, I don't think he should have died in the car. I think that he was being a really big stubborn bull and he was going around on adrenaline. Now, I've watched enough Grey's Anatomy and Chicago Hope to tell you that if you're running around on adrenaline, you don't know that you're having internal bleeding until it's massive. Mm. And I think that they made a mistake in him being magically okay because Kyle said you probably have some internal bleeding or broken bones. And it was a really good segue to, hey, we're going to kill the general, just not until the end of this episode when we think m mostly that um, Jordan is safe. They just didn't do it. Uh, yeah, that would have been good. But um, yeah, because death at mid death at mid uh, redemption arc would have kept him there. Now, yeah, he's still on the good side, but he also said he's going to retire and like move to Smallville. It's like, can we just not? Right. <laughs> yeah. Not? Like, why? I, I have to question maybe if the reason they did that is because um, David Harewood. I, no, not David Harewood. Um, who plays? Who plays? Uh, John Diggle, can't think of his name. So David David Ramsey. Yep. David, David Ramsey. Ramsey. David Ramsey. Yeah. Maybe he could move over from Argus over to there. The mm -hmm. problem is, is oh no, he is military, so it wouldn't be actually not logical. So maybe they can move him over there and give him a permanent home. Kind That'd of. That'd be great. I would love um, it. I would love it. Or the other person I could see doing it is the guy that played Martian Manhunter on Supergirl. Um, moving them over and giving them it, it would keep a consistency that kind of needs to be in there mm -hmm. um, and not like just let these actors go and then try and get them back when you need them um, for situational things, if that's what they're going to intend to do. Um, but I'm hoping that that's the case. I don't want to kind of have this thing where they hadn't charmed the original version where the person at the FBI that they ended up putting in was the anti like let's get rid of superman type person except it was like let's get rid of the charmed witches and then you spent a whole season with it and then guy finally realized oh uh they're not the evil ones after all it, it, yeah i get that there's a trope but I, i've had enough of the general this season to know he was the anti-hero we don't need another actual villain up there right mm -hmm. but um I just, I, I don't want to see that cast that way. And there's a lot of available people after Supergirl went off the air. The guy that played Brainy was really smart. Um, there was also the guy that yeah. went to the future, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy uh, something. Can't think of his actor's name, but. Jeremy um, Jordan. Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Jordan. He went to the future and he was really good. So maybe they'll sort it out and, and hopefully put somebody there. I would love to. I would love to have Win back. I miss yeah. Win. Yeah, Win was, he was um, so good. And I, I think that, like Win, um, that Carlos Valdez is going to be like he was. He's another one that could easily have fit in in up there if he had been military. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. like all these geniuses are kind of like purging out of the Arrowverse, and we kind of need some of them back. We <laughs> do. More, we need them back. They they added something to it, and. Uh, Mm -hmm. And Superman doesn't have enough, what's the right word, roots in the Arrowverse. Um, and granted, the Arrowverse is kind of coming oddly to a weird end here. Um, with Superman and Lois, I don't know how many more there's going to be after Superman and Lois. They kind of passed on like eight of them. So it'll... It kind of needs some of the old Arrowverse characters to come back. Even from Oliver's team would be nice. Uh, you know, the yeah. Black, Black Canary or any of them. Just just so that the viewers can be like, yes, we're really in the Arrowverse. I mean, I expect that we'll see Lex Luthor at some point. The actual real Lex. Yeah. And I'm wondering if like, if, if they recast Lex. or if Eventually, Superman and Lois has to have Lex Luthor. I mean, 
Because in the show, like he's already battled Lex Luthor. That's all in the past. But like he's got to come back. And will they have John Cryer as? Because I, I got to say, like I was really impressed with his Lex Luthor. I thought it was going to be terrible when I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. actually pretty good. I am not a big fan of Jonathan Cryer. Um, oh, okay. Well, uh, and not out, not out, uh, no, he was good as Lex. I'm just not a normal, everyday John Cryer fan. Right. Um, uh, I actually liked a lot of the Smallville actor. Now that I've had to yes. listen to six seasons of it, that is chaining on a marathon downstairs. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, he was great. Um, and but Michael Rosenbaum absolutely simply just detests talking about it anymore, and which is really odd because he was a fabulous character for nine season. Mm. Uh, I I would get a good laugh if Michael Rosenbaum could go torture our Superman because he was hilarious. He did things he was that great. He, he was just he was so evil and sadistic, but he was just clever about it. And uh I don't know. Alex Luther is gonna appear because Lex is Lex. I mean, you're not gonna not have Alex Luther. Yeah. Unless you're point. a it's Superman's nemesis that Lex spent more time torturing Superman than anybody else. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, it, when you think of Superman, well, at least with me, I, I think of Superman, I think of Lex Luthor. I don't even think of Doomsday, because Doomsday was probably one of the, like, probably the biggest battle he ever had, actually, battle. But Lex Luthor is, you, know, you can't, it's like... Lex it's, Luthor was the the human that just drove Superman crazy. Because mm -hmm. He was human. He just found new and improved ways to torture Clark. Right. Um, and... Yes, there was Doomsday, and yes, there was General Zod. I don't think we've seen the last of Zod. I'm a no. little, I'm a little iffy wiffy if Clark is not completely suppressing Zod. Um, it will be interesting if that comes back up because he barely beat Zod, and again, it's a consistency problem. I have a problem with Jordan beating. A Kryptonian when Jordan is half the strength of Clark. Right, right, right. So, I wonder if we're gonna see a Bizarro at all. Bizarro Superman, you know, because they had one in Smallville, um, which hey, it was like a couple episodes, but you know, and to anybody that doesn't know, like Bizarro is pretty much the same as Superman, but he's opposite, where the sun makes him weaker, and like Kryptonite makes him stronger, and his like face is like stone or whatever and his of course his costume is just the reverse symbol and different colors i don't know it'd be, it'd be uh, a fun thing maybe not though man it's kind of more of a goofy character uh even even like when they're more serious with it he's still a goofy character it's kind of like i don't know it might not fit with that with the tone of that show i don't know i think the problem so technically small though is actually in the arrowverse or was mm -hmm. in the arrowverse before the worlds blew up but I think that they have to be careful not to fall into the trope of doing what Smallville did. And that yeah. was too many tweakings of Clark. Uh, like every eh, season once or twice, they would tweak Clark with kryptonite or yeah. something to him that made him not Clark. The difference between Superman and Lois and Smallville is Clark has a family and any of his wackiness would jeopardize his family. And so if they do do the wackiness that they did with that, uh, you, you, you're going to have to figure out how to juggle the family so that they can corral yeah. him. Like, and then you're going to have to go back to, to putting him in a kryptonite cage. And it, it just feels like you can't really take Clark Kent out of the picture for very long because you don't have a sustainable option to let Jordan fly around and be Superboy. Um, I mean, I mm -hmm. guess he can fly now, but yeah, it uh, it's the last thing that people need to worry about in this very tiny town of Smallville is Superman and Superboy both flying around because then the DOD, which the general is no longer running, has to, can't protect both it, it turns into a problem right yeah it so, does yeah. It, it's a lot they did a lot in smallville and it just I don't know. 
Yeah, and that show too was like it was new, so like, well, it was like we didn't have a show like that up to that point. I mean, you had uh, Lois and Clark with Dean Kane and Terry Hatcher, but that was completely different. Smallville mm-hmm. was like, oh, he's young. Let's like learn about him as a child. What what shapes him into Superman? So they had the room to play with these things and, and be goofy and stuff, going through uh, puberty and like all these different things, like. They, they were able to focus on that. But like you said, with, with the family, with this, there's more seriousness to it that you can't just have a bunch of goofy things going on and like people flying around everywhere and, and all you this. Al- and you that. already saw that with what happens with that kind of with Jordan in the first episode when he figured out he had powers. Yeah. It 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 just sets on. And, and I can they've already kind of done it. Mm-hmm. And they also brought in two forms of kryptonite in one season. And uh, and it was the wackiest form of kryptonite um, <laughs> that made other Kryptonians. So, yeah, that's, yeah, like they didn't actually bring in the black kryptonite because if they bring in black kryptonite, you're gonna have a really truly evil Superman. Yep. Um. Uh. Which, in some cases, makes a, du- a duplicate copy of him, and in other cases, actually yep. makes him evil. But then you're gonna have to figure out how to actually kill Superman. And they kind of already did the death of Superman story. Yes. Yeah. So, and they just didn't kill him at the end. Uh, and also they've, they've had his off camera before no one saw it, but they mentioned in crisis that or Lois tells him you're the guy that fought doomsday. So like that has already happened in that world anyway. So, so yeah, I mean, and with black kryptonite going back to Smallville for a second, I'm not comparing them, but that Lex Luthor was, exposed to black kryptonite clark i think it was clark that used it on him split the evil lex and the good lex and then evil lex captures good lex and puts him in an iron mask and like runs around pretending to be the real lex it was an interesting story it was my favorite smallville lex episode but well clark was not exactly good in smallville not really he was a chaotic neutral at best and sometimes he was a little bit lawful evil um because he never left smallville and he got really bitter against lex luther and so he started letting his bitterness drive what he did versus his common sense and so Mm. we're seeing about a 40 year old clark kent with two boys and a wife and a world to keep saving if black kryptonite comes into the picture, it's going to be one of the boys that they use it on. Yeah. That would be so much less complicated. If they use it on Clark, that we've already seen what that does. And we've already seen right. evil Superman. We don't need to see another version of it. I mean, evil Superman doesn't change. He's evil and he does not help anybody. He kills people. Well, doesn't kill them, but destroys worlds. They never show him kill anything. <laughs> he just destroys worlds. Um. Your dog is tap dancing. <laughs> yeah, it's not my dog, but her dog's sitting and is currently uh, deciding to run around. Which oh, is... Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's okay. He He's cool. Yeah. It's the cat you have to be freaked out with. Yeah, okay, you see, so... you'll see them every once in a while for you. <laughs> we don't mind extra guests. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I want to say that there were, in this in the, in the finale, and the, the two episodes that were there, I thought there were some some good moments mm-hmm. if we're going to say i would if we're all going to admit that there were probably some missed opportunities i still think there were some great moments in there like mm-hmm. when jordan becomes zeta row and we see his eyes go red and there he's flying and speaking with zeta row's voice i mean i thought that part was truly terrifying yeah yeah i really liked that and i I've... think that yeah go ahead I've always known Jordan was evil. Um, I've all I it's it has never been a doubt in my mind that at some point he was going to be evil of uh, of some kind, even if his own accord or somebody else. Um, and so for that, for me, that scene was more of a ha. I win. Got him. <laughs> I'm like you're evil. I literally messaged her and I said I win. <laughs> <laughs> and I did point out, can we really say that it's Jordan though? Because it technically wasn't. So and Jordan Jordan as he was was crying in his room, um, in his brain. So 
would I say Jordan's evil? No. Was he at that point though? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't him. Right. But, so here's the thing that I didn't really understand. If he's going to be possessed by an eeling and you looked at Clark, I, the only comparison we have is Clark to Zod. So that's like the only because Zod was no, Zod wasn't evil. Zod was just determined. He he had a one track mind, which made him act evil. But he his he wanted to save Krypton. The other guy was just flat evil. Um, I I wasn't sure if Jordan's tendency to have issues um, with his anger allowed for that part of him was actually still a part of when he was possessed, or if it was all Jordan in the room. It's not easy to say how much your own morality benchline affects it. Um, with Clark, we obviously saw Clark was consciously fighting Zod the entire time. So Zod didn't have a very easy time of trying to get through Clark because Clark was mentally dueling him the entire time. Mm -hmm. But they didn't show that mental duel between uh, Jordan and Zeta Rowe. And you just put him in a room. So it's like, okay, are you in a room because that's where the scared part of you is and then the, the angry part of you is in there or vice versa? So, or does it not even matter? Because it does matter for content and storytelling if you know how much you're, how much does it affect you? Because we do know in the comics, Clark didn't have an evil bone in his body. And that's what saved him a lot of the time. In fact, he didn't. So Jordan, we know that Yes, he has outbursts of anger that we've seen, and we've mm. seen his family have to hold him. So does that contribute to the ability to be possessed? And then that way they just they use the bad parts and keep the good ones locked away, kind of like they did in Supernatural with Lucifer and Castiel. Castiel was not evil, but Castiel was his whole person when he was inside of his head. So. I, really, I really think that Jordan's mind was maybe weaker. Maybe not say, I wouldn't say weaker, but like, he was more susceptible to being possessed and being controlled than probably anybody else. And since he had that Kryptonian DNA, it made the perfect combination. Because yeah. I thought the same thing. I was like, why didn't they just possess uh, Jonathan? Because he, like, it would have been the chance to, even if it wasn't permanent, to see him flying around and using his powers for a minute. And I was like, why didn't they pick him? Probably because he, he, he was too strong-willed or he was too this or that. And, you know, uh, Jordan's anger and his, his feelings and emotions that were so off-balance – I think totally played a part in that. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think it, it contributed to his possession, but do I think that he allowed it? I don't think he allowed it. I don't no. think he had the, I don't think he had the choice because he was just overwhelmed because mm -hmm. he wasn't that strong. You know, he wasn't as strong as his brother, like mentally, definitely not as strong as his brother. He kind of had the physical edge, but Mentally, his Jonathan outshone Jordan every single time, right? Like you could tell who got who got whose emotional state essentially, mm -hmm. where Jord Jonathan got both his mother and father's like will essentially, uh, and Jordan got left with absolutely nothing, <laughs> nothing. which <laughs> makes the reason for him to be evil make it right. Worse. Exactly, which you made it which it made it a bit, a bit easier for him to have to deal with it, which is part of the reason why I think they gave the powers to Jordan rather than Jonathan, because mm -hmm. it did make for better, a better storyline with the angsty kid in the corner getting superpowers rather than the popular jock over here getting superpowers, you know? Yeah. So. I, I did like the, the scene where you see Jordan punch Superman, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. the idea, the idea that there is, there is Jordan, you know, fighting his father, even though he's not in control. You, know, you you can't tell me that at least on some level, Jordan is sort of letting out his frustration with his dad, right? I've Honestly, if it wasn't for Jonathan this season, I think Jordan would have gone at least once or twice, if not more, at his dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan has acted a lot in Jordan's best interest by getting between Clark and Jordan um, physically. And it seems to make Clark check out or check in and be like, oh, 
I can't do that. This is not it. And that's an example of Clark fighting his own Kryptonian nature. The problem is with Jordan is Jordan. I don't think Jordan ticks off Clark Kent, the human side. I think he pushes the button of the Kryptonian side, which makes it really a problem because Clark doesn't always have that ability instantly to sit there and turn it off. And and when you're angry, it doesn't process as well, no matter, I mean, as well. And he he is prone to it. And, and that's the internal struggle that we see with Jordan all the time. And the problem is, is they're exactly alike. The difference is, is one of them has had a little bit longer and the other one doesn't know when to stop. The, and, and that's why I at least think that Jordan has the dogs on the table. Okay, <laughs> uh, Jordan has gotten, or Jonathan has gotten between them because Clark, Clark needs that. He needs that like humanity because he knows that if he were to go, let's just say theoretically, he were to you know, punch at his son. He wouldn't. But if his Kryptonian side was getting to that point where he thought he was going to throw a punch, he's not going to throw a punch at his all-human child. He, you know, we've seen what that does. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that was a really that was a really good scene though. I mean, I, I knew I was expecting him to punch him, but I was like, he's not going to do it. No. But still, could, it was. I was like, come on, just just make it just make it stop. Just cut his head off. We're like what? Well, and Zayn and Rowe <clears throat> flat out said, you can't even bring yourself to hit your kid. Yeah. And, and I yeah, I was like, he's not going to. You're, no. You are just a visitor in that body. And if I hurt that body, it's half human. So <laughs> you, he knows what happens if he hits a half human body. It's not so, going to recover. Yeah. But I, I think that that was kind of the point. They, he was using Jordan as a shield. Mm -hmm. Right, you won't you won't fight me because otherwise that's going to put your your son's life in jeopardy, and it was clever and it was cruel, um, and I and I kind of dig that a little bit. I wanted to bring up um, the other kid, Jonathan, because I know that we've we've talked before about him kind of feeling a bit like the whipping boy, right? That he's he's not getting the love or the respect that we all think that he deserves, but I really like. I've got to be honest, I, I like what they're doing. They're kind of slowly developing him into um, somebody who has an, an, an interest and a desire for technology. Like we see him hanging out with John Henry Irons. And as much as, you know, John doesn't want him to be there, um, I, I think that we see that he has this this interest in weapons. Um, and I, and I, I, re I really could see him becoming a human superhero, kind of like um, Supergirl's um, sister, right? Who becomes Sentinel. I... Oh, and Jimmy Olsen as well on that show. Yeah. I kind of... Oh, you want to talk, Chloe? What? Nothing. Every time you you just unmuted yourself and I heard you, so I figured you wanted to talk. Oh, no, I was just going to say with the whole Jonathan thing, too, beyond the whole getting closer to John Henry Ida Irons, you see it that John Henry starts to accept Jonathan, like the 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 penultimate and then the, the, the finale where he's bringing him in. You know, a kick starts to go from uh, the guy, the kid who's always hanging around to the guy, kid I don't want around to the kid, oh yeah, he's a little helpful to, hey, we're gonna go do this now. Um, which I feel is also something with his daughter because he basically used Jonathan as a substitute for his daughter. His daughter wasn't there. His daughter was always the one to help him. Well, now he has Jonathan. Well, now his daughter's back. Um, I think it'll be interesting if they do take him into that realm where Jonathan starts to become basically a human superhero, you know, going in that direction. Do I think it would go there? I'm not 100% sure he would, but they have a good setup where if they bring in the daughter to, um, they'd be able to have like a little group to themselves, you know, with that, away from Clark and away from the DOD that just the three of them would be able to work it out, essentially. Mm -hmm. I think they've built into his character a desire to be super. I think that, that there, there seems something baked in the cake of his mind that he wants to be um, 
super like his father, and yet he doesn't have the biology to back it up. So we we see him being the one who you know wields the kryptonite gun for his grandfather, right? We see him holding that that specially designed uh, weapon uh, against Jordan uh, while uh, Lois is in his mind. I think we're we're seeing him um, kind of become kind of step into this role of being the protector. Um, and I and I think that is that's a side that I think um, is they're they're not just automatically making him that character, but they're slowly building that into him. And right. that I, I agree. I think that John has decided he's really tired of everybody telling that, like Clark and Lois and everybody saying that they're going to protect him. He's decided, no, no, no. I'm going to protect me. And if dad and you are going to go save the world, cool. But I'm going to be at this farm and I'm going to shoot anything that comes here that I don't want here. And it either makes him really brilliant or slightly a little bit terrifying. Because I, I'm still not convinced that Jonathan is completely a muggle. Um, there are there are a couple of signs that we've noticed along the way. His hand was broken and it should have been broken for at least three to four episodes. Mm -hmm. It was broken yep. for two. Um, in this, he gets hurt in, in the finale or the penultimate and then the finale. And he says that he can shoot with either hand equally as well. So it either leads me to believe he has always had these latent powers um, of car of Clark, where he can see things because we saw it in slow mo. We saw what happened in slow mo. Mm -hmm. That slow mo was not Jordan's slow mo, and it most certainly wasn't the guy that was punching him. So the only person that could have seen that in slow motion would have been Jonathan. And then the second thing was he had a hand that he always shoots with, and he says he's just as good with his left hand. Well, the only way that he is equally as good as right and left is that he can see what he's shooting at flawlessly and that his dexterity does not matter whether it's your non-dominant or dominant hand. I know for me, my left hand is dumb. And so I wouldn't be able to hold anything with it. I can't even write. But for the character to acknowledge that to the audience or to others on screen, he may not have the superhuman parts and be weak in the superhuman areas that Kryptonians typically would, but he still has Kryptonian DNA. He's still mm -hmm. half a Clark. He may have always had powers, quote unquote, the latent powers, which is why he has been able to get through his whole life as being a superstar, which is why he heals quicker. That's not something that we've seen in Jord Jonathan or Jordan, that he heals quicker. He tends to be bruised for a long time. John, no. He's usually, I got beat up and I'm pretty okay a little bit later. And for him to fire a gun, even though he'd had a hurt hand, he had said earlier that, or the doctor had said earlier, he may not even be able to throw a ball again. Mm -hmm. Again, your hands, not being able to throw a ball, not being able to pull the trigger of a gun, same, same difference. So they, they may not be totally honest with Jonathan not having powers. Yeah, I think that it's possible, you know, we, I think that Jordan kind of sucks up all the air in the room, right? Everybody's everybody's so wrapped up in is Jordan okay? And Jonathan, he could have powers, but kind of keep that to himself. I, I think I he, I don't want to think he wants to worry his mom anymore. I think that his mom is, as we've seen, is absolutely terrified. She's terrified she can't protect those boys. And, you know, John probably finds it easier. I'm going to protect my mom. I'm not going to make her worry about me. And, yeah, he, he's, he keeps it secret. He keeps it quiet. He's not, one of those, he's not one of those people that talks about everything unless it's with his brother. And even then, they've had honest moments and then they've had less than honest moments. <laughs> Right. I think what they're doing is splitting the Superboy character into two different people. Well, we've seen that because there's two kids. But I think what you were saying, like, 
he's healing faster. He's doing this, this thing and this thing. What, what if he has all those physical like healing powers and then Jordan has everything else? Like, you know, the, the laser vision and the he was hit, you know, whatever, and all that stuff. I think when maybe they became two people after Crisis, the power split into two people equally. I, and I, I don't know. I think that assuming Oliver is the ultra overarching deity of this universe, that's what I call him, but whatever. Mm -hmm. He created it. It's on his blood. It's his death. Right. Yeah. So, so um, assuming he is. Oliver would have done everything in his power to protect the earth that he loved. And so making two boys and giving one active powers and one the latent powers, if you notice and you look at Jordan when he broke Jonathan's hand, he broke Jonathan's hand because of the super strength. That being said, it has healed and he's back to being able to do things with it. If he had not, if it had been a normal person, I question if it wouldn't have had surgery and you would have had all those pins in them. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and I mean, I chopped off my finger when I was a kid and I had two pins and 180 stitches. So, you know, it, it doesn't seem to me anyway that it's just like this fluid story. I'd like to see Jonathan be bulletproof. Yeah. Because that because that would make my whole day. I'd be like, ha, and and that's how Clark finds. Like, I I also wonder if that was another illusion to it, where Clark got there with one second, and it was bullets and stuff being shot at him. If he himself would have reflected the bullets had his dad not been there, so there's been some cinematography that just makes me think it's already there. And they're trying not to make it a big deal because John is not going to make it a big deal. It's going to get found out accidentally and then he's going to get reamed. <clears throat> I still think he doesn't know he has powers. I think he has them but doesn't realize it. And I think the reason for that is like the healing. When he was younger, it probably didn't happen. But as he gets older, the more he gets hurt, the, the stronger he becomes. Sort of like Doomsday. Like The more Superman would beat him up, the stronger he got. You know, they had the whole entire Justice League and everything, like, trying to kill Doomsday, and he just kept getting stronger and stronger. I think that might be what's happening with, with uh, Jonathan, where he doesn't realize it, and it's going slowly over time to the point where just a little bit at a time, and he just doesn't notice. I think that you guys – I think what you had said before about uh, he doesn't want to worry his mom, I think that's probably – uh, he's always thinking about other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like – that's probably more true to the answer that he knows he's got powers, but he's not going to add to the drama that they're already dealing with. Right. It, he's in control of his power. If he knows, which that's debatable, but if he knows, which I don't see how he doesn't um, based on just the cinematography. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a lot about how they frame pictures. That's like my thing of how they frame the pictures. That's how I see things. So I don't always like believe the whole what's being put in front of my face. I believe more of what the cinematographer does because they're the ones that are telling the, the story per se. So mm -hmm. the words are there, but there are always meanings to, especially in Superman and Lois. I mean, Chloe actually pointed it out when we started reviewing the show everything means something on this show. I skip a lot of the te like stuff when we do our reviews for Superman and Lois because I just there's just words, too many words for me to 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 like care about. But I never skip the things that have a an impact with the cinematography. And there's just been too many instances where it seems like John knows, but John's until it gets revealed and John's going to be like I got it. I'm in control of it. I know what I'm doing. You don't have to worry about me. The that type of thing. And his whole family has drama. He he seems to be the one that kind of keeps the glue together. Uh, mm -hmm. You would think it would be Lois, but I Lois at the beginning of the season, I would 100% have said that Lois was the rock. And she may very well be Clark's rock, but the rock in the Kent household is neither one of the parents. It's John who... Right. He's always there for his mom. He's always willing to talk to his dad. And he doesn't give his dad grief. He just wants to help his dad. He wants to be a part of his dad's world. 
in whatever way he can, which is why the holding the wrench scene upset him so much. He, he was trying to bond with his dad. Um, and that changed. I thought it was Lois, but it definitely became John at around episode six, seven, when he started like putting the general in his place. Yeah, that was great. I love that. And and when he stuck up to John Henry Irons and said, don't you dare kill my dad. Don't do it. The dad, he's a really good dad. He's not afraid to step into these alpha males in his world who would normally poo-poo this little 16, 17-year-old kid and um, be like, hey, I have a voice. I have an opinion. That's my family. I'm dealing with it. I think that his 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 decision to play football, right, which is kind of aggressive in your face, you don't back down, you don't run away from your your problems, you you tackle them head on. I think that personality we really see that that he is both the the protector and he is he has no problem in you know taking the offense, right? And I think that is that is definitely a a personality trait that we see you know actively being expressed with him. He has a switch, and as where Jordan can't control that switch, and it makes him a wild card, I think Jonathan can control his switch almost too well, sometimes debatably better than Clark himself, and that makes Jonathan very scary and a very formidable opponent if you're, if you're pissing him off. Because once he decides to do something, I'm not calling it the Kryptonian like attitude. I'm simply just calling it the, the I'm done with you and I'm tired of you like attitude. It reminds me of just being Superman on steroids. He's almost more scary than Clark is at Clark at his worst. And Clark has superpowers. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, it's scary to watch him when he finally, I, I don't know, like, I was kind of scared of him a little bit. <laughs> yeah. When he, uh, a couple times, the you know, when he went to the general and his the general was talking down about his dad and his brother, I was like, he's a little scary there. And then to see him get that weapon from the general and when Lois was going to go inside his brain. I'm, I, I even said to myself, I wonder if John can use it. And then you realize John has decided that if he has to use it, he's going to use it. And he, no matter how hard it is to, for him to use it on his brother, he's going to do it. And he did. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay, then. And he didn't know what that gun was going to do. I thought, I thought he was going to kill Jordan. I yeah. thought it yeah. was to kill him. And, and when he shot it, I was like, he's going to kill him. And, and and I had thought that he had resolved to kill him. Like that was how he, he was going to save his family. And, and in his own, and the, uh, the way that um, Jordan played that, not, not Jordan, the, the character, Jordan, the actor <laughs> played that it was marvelous because the, we didn't know what he was even going to do as fans. We're like, I was like, oh, he killed him. I'm like, he had decided he's going to kill him, no. even though he was his twin brother. And it was his decision to do it. It wasn't Lois's decision. He was the one who was out there protecting his mom and his brother. And he had decided he'd kill his brother to save the world. Yeah. And that takes a lot of courage, considering that's his twin brother. And mm -hmm. his whole life, that's, that's half of him. And this whole season... You know that that's yes, they are two individuals, but there is something to be said that they were one. There was one Jonathan when this all the Arrowverse happened, and then when Crisis on Infinite Earths happened. Now there's two, so that is a piece of him. Um, walking around on two feet, and to right. kill his twin, it was just wow. It was a very powerful moment. At least I don't know. Like I thought he was dead. I thought well, George's dead, and I was just like Chloe's gonna be fury. <laughs> yeah. I literally yeah, said Chloe's gonna yeah. kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad it didn't come to that. I will say that there is kind of a subtle thing that I've noticed. Um, the issue with Jonathan and alcohol. Have you noticed that? Like Jonathan, Jonathan likes the booze. And we've seen him drinking. I mean, I, I realize he's a teen, they're both teenagers. Mm -hmm. Teenagers like to go party, but it does seem like Jonathan in particular is uh, is drinking more than just casually that he, I don't know whether he's using 
alcohol as a coping mechanism. Like, like on the surface, everything is fine, but he's trying to hide something. Um, I, I, we, we talked about how everything has a reason. And part of me wants to say that they're, they're showing that side of him for a purpose. Uh, hmm. I, I wonder, yeah, I don't know. I think that if Jonathan is keeping, if Jonathan is assuming being the anchor to his family and a bunch of family with superpowers, making sure his mother doesn't fall apart, making sure his brother doesn't fall apart, keeping his dad happy because he just wants, he's a people pleaser that needs to people please. And if he can't people please, he's, it makes him crazy. And then trying to be like John Henry Irons and just be this determined guy. And he's had to grow up. Yes, him and Jordan are the same age, but he has had to grow up in light speed time compared to that. He has always been the protector. So if you've ever had a sibling or somebody with a disability and you are their whatever, you you grow up in light speed time to do that. So there are always consequences to that. Yes, we've seen John get drunk, but the other times that he's drank, he hasn't gotten drunk. And Clark can't actually get drunk. So I wonder if it's all these secrets he has to keep from not only his family, but about how he feels because his feelings don't matter because his brother's a superhuman going through way worse. And the only outlet he has is I don't want to feel it anymore. Uh, because if I can't, if I don't feel it, then it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I guess it could cause a crash and burn scenario for him eventually because it's not a sustainable option. But that being said, if Jonathan crashes and burns, pretty much the whole Kenton family crashes and burns because each and every one of them depend on John to do something in their little network. And uh, it might be his vice. It probably will come back to haunt them. Uh, it also might be the trigger that he gets in a freaking car accident and there you find out he escapes because he can see time slowing down. And yes, he destroys mom and dad's car again. Um, but he didn't get hurt in that. And he had perfect aim. How could you, he, did anybody catch that? He ran into a building not knowing where his dad was because his brother couldn't see. His brother doesn't have the vision through it. And yet he had perfect aim to save his dad. There was nothing open. He crashed through a wall. There you go. Another indication. Somebody yeah. can see through walls. So. Very true. There's a lot that to be said that he's not saying. And I think that he knows how to get out of not getting hurt. And. While it's great for him, it's terrible for everybody else because eventually he is going to get hurt, but not hurt. Okay, he's not going to get hurt. Somebody else is going to get hurt, and that's what's going to cause the problem. But I'm hoping that they don't go down that road. They did that with uh, somebody in Smallville. I think it was Lex. They, they do that. It's a trope. Uh, there's always yeah. that teen that gets drunk, and usually... It's one of their friends that gets killed. One of their friends get hospitalized. I think on every single show on the entire CW network that has happened. It happened with Felicity and Ollie in the limo. It happened on Supernatural multiple times. I mean, they sort of did it on Heroes um, yeah. because, you know, uh, she couldn't get hurt. She was like had this like instant healing. And so, but then again, that was a different scenario. The, the, right. You know, that was completely well, different. But it was the idea yeah. of like, I can't get hurt, so I'm going to, I don't care. Well, and that, I think that it's a, it's a trope for a reason. I mean, it's a pattern that people have used in literature, you know, for a long time. The question comes down to, are, do they do it well? And I think that's the question we have to ask ourselves. The only injustice for Jordan that I could, or Jordan, Jonathan, that I can see happening is if he has powers and if something were to happen where him having powers like say it accidentally kills sarah like the only person i could really think about is like sarah's dad or or somebody not you know 
wildly important to the storyline. I mean, yes, they're maybe important, but they're not wildly important. There's right. also you know, there's sister, also, you know. Yeah. There's also sister, an, yes. there's also there's You're also evil. Possible. You're evil. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody will miss her. Well, no. there's also the possibility of that other, the new girl, whatever her name, uh, the the daughter, the, probably the daughter of the guy that escaped in like episode two when Tag was running around and Clark had to leave him there. Um, and so there's always like her. Maybe he's going to get close to her and she's going to end up dying because he has no choice. It, it, there's poor ways to do it and there's good ways to do it. But the worst way that I could see doing it is torturing poor John <laughs> in a way that destroys him because he is, he's basically like, uh, you know, the paragon of all good. And I would beg, beg to differ that he really would have been a paragon had he existed at this age in crisis because He's the most well-grounded on the outside human there is. Mm -hmm. um, but Oliver didn't create two twins with totally different polar personalities and polar things that going on for no reason. And maybe it's John Jonathan's humanity and everything that Jonathan has that will eventually stop Jordan from leaping over the cliff. I don't know how many people watch Buffy, but... That's what happened with uh, Xander and Willow. It's impossible to not know that storyline if you were alive in like the 2000s. It was on every news thing ever after <laughs> it happened. Yep. Um, like, I don't know the show, but I remember hearing about that. Everybody. Yeah. Oh my God, Xander saved Willow. Yes. So it, yes, I still think Jordan's going to go evil, but I still think Jonathan is going to yank him back. But if you destroy that character going into the dark pits of drinking and killing people off accidentally or doing something to that, then you ruin that chance that you have. Because as we see, they can write up to 13 episodes or 12 and a half and things are fine. But you get to 15 and theoretically to 20 and 22. I don't know. I'm not so confident right now. Um <laughs> I don't know how many they've been picked up for next season, but I'm a little not confident about it. I will fully admit that. I'm like, no, unless you're going to write 24, how you're supposed to. Front 12 has one story. Back 12 has one story. And you have one or two main story all the way through. But you don't just have like five finales. Because if you do that, you're going to burn your freaking fans out in two seasons. They, they, did, they tried to do that in Arrow seasons one and two where they kept having at points where they were going to like, Oh, you could end it right now. You could end it right now. No, they didn't. Um, and I loved Arrow. So yeah, Arrow was, Arrow was great. Very, very good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is the other thing I had thought maybe that Jonathan has a little bit of Oliver queen in him. Um, what if he I, is Oliver queen? No, I'm just <laughs> No, no. Ollie is in his office looking over all of them, laughing, going, okay, you're alive. You have all the tools you need. And I don't need to be here until I need to be here. Um, he'll appear if they need him. I don't doubt that Amel, now that he is mostly stuck in Canada forever now, he can't even go home. <laughs> he's, he's stuck there. I don't think he gets to go home hardly anymore because of COVID. I'm sure he would walk on over to his former studios and they'd probably go, New Pants Day! <laughs> <laughs> did you ever read about what, what they did to Stephen Amell on New Pants Day? He no. Couldn't, he couldn't do anything. So New Pants Day was when they would replace his arrow pants and his arrow, like, outfit. So he couldn't move in it. So they couldn't do any, like, calisthenics in it for, like, the first day or two. He had to wear them just to break them in. And so it was New Pants Day. They're like, nope, can't bend over. Nope, can't do that. Can't do that. They'd have to have stunt doubles do it. And then I'll have to tie like, my shoe. No, you need a stunt double for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, on New Pants Day, they did because he was, he, like, I, that is the one thing. I'll, I, I give props to Stephen Amell for Arrow. That man wore those leather pants for eight years and never complained. <laughs> Not once. And, and constantly would put on those new leather outfits they made him wear for eight years. He had the worst outfit. Like, it, everybody compared to him on that show? Nope. 
<laughs> you get to not complain because this is the worst. It's head to toe. See, he should have he should have done what Ryan Reynolds did with Deadpool. He had them make all the costumes. So he broke them in prior to filming, so then they would just switch them out as needed. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was a good idea. <laughs> Oh, okay, Deadpool's a little different than Arrow. A little bit different. Just a little bit. A little bit. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds can move a little bit in that. I know you haven't watched Arrow, but it's coming. You will understand the Arrow you seen and Arrow. No, when I say oh, that I'm not, when I'm not Chloe. a DC fan, I live in the world Chloe. of Batman. Chloe. <laughs> Uh, there, there's Batman and Joker and Harlequin and Poison Ivy. I'm over there. The no, no, you're coming with me. You're coming back. We're no gonna error. go to the dark side. This is I, this is the first this is the first step into like the other half, and I'm like, oh, this is the happy place. Why am right. I here? <laughs> right. And honestly, I didn't start watching Arrow until two years ago, right before the ending. Of the series, so but it, I but had it, I got mad at, at when Oliver was in jail, and I rebelled and wouldn't watch it. I'm like, this sucks because they just Oliver could have killed them all, and he did nothing except get beat within an inch of his life. And I, I was ready to throttle all the writers. I was like, no. <laughs> Same thing with the Flash. That season he was in jail. I was like. Oh, no. actually, I like that when Barry was in jail. When he was I mean, in jail. There, there were good episodes, and it was it was a good storyline. But it was just like, man, I wouldn't go out and like have a run through the city at night or something. Like, I wouldn't just sit there the entire time being a good boy. I don't know. Well, he did run to China and back. He yeah, did. for like he, yeah. he he did do that. Yeah, he ran to China. He ran around, stopped a whole feud, and it's true. And and son, I think he was comforted by the fact he was in his dad's cell, and so yeah. he wasn't as like determined to get out because every time he thought about getting out he kind of would look over there and be like oh i can survive this my dad survived it for something he didn't do yeah i, I can survive it for a little bit um but no superman i don't know superman and lois is interesting i i just i think i i know i'm a jonathan fan but i'm like come on do something productive for john because yeah i'm like this this guy doesn't get any credit for anything he does. Zero credit. He doesn't get credit. No one cares that he saves. He basically adjusted the general's attitude, not once, but twice. Uh, saved his dad from certain death twice. Although once was with the help of his brother. And uh, oh, he did get credit for that one. Did get credit for that one. For, for, for going through the barn but didn't get credit for saving his dad with John Henry Irons. And he takes all this responsibility, you know, oh, it's my fault that uh, I almost got killed. It was my fault that I drove through a wall to Lois. And he takes all this accountability for yeah. everything. And you're like, do you do anything right to these people? Or are you just constantly? Yeah. I don't think he does anything right. And it kind of upsets me. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm, I look at yeah. Jordan and, or Jonathan, and I'm like, or Jordan. I'm like, oh, you're Superboy, and you constantly get in trouble, and John gets to take the heat for you getting in trouble again. Yep. But isn't that so? T isn't that typical? I mean, I I hate to say it, but so many families are like that, right? You got you got like the the favored kid that can do no wrong, and then you got the the other kid that always seems to get in trouble. I mean, I, I certainly have seen that play out in my family. Uh, I won't tell you which one I am. But uh, I, I was the I was the oldest. I was always I, I made my life mission not to get in trouble. I did yep. my homework. I tried mm -hmm. not to cause problems. Yeah, I'm the my, oldest too. My younger, my middle brother is boy wonder. He can do no wrong. And my youngest brother is he's the guy that was a genius, but decided he was going to be a D plus C plus student. But he's a genius. He is, and still to this day, is a genius. And now. He, but he had the most sarcastic attitude. And it's like, if you would just act like a human for five minutes, you would be a genius doing things. And um, no, nah. but Boy Wonder never got in trouble. Right. Boy so Wonder, I, to this yeah. day, I, he's Boy Wonder. <laughs> so what I do feel like is, as unfair it is, as it is to the character, it is it is very realistic. Where, mm -hmm. where parents, even I think unintentionally, 
end up favoring one child over the other? I only have one, so I can't actually like say yay or nay to that. And I know Chloe only has one, so she can't actually say yay or nay to that either. I except also come she... from I also come from the world of only children. Right. So. Oh, right. Um, I I don't know. For me, I get more irritated simply because John, although Jordan may have had the explosions and whatever, you know, you want to call it, without John to be there to take all the BS, for lack of a better term, because he takes a lot of BS, uh, I don't know that it would have been as successful. And that's that would be annoying at a certain point. If I was a twin and my twin was was the one causing mom and dad to worry all the time, I, I would get a little bored of being that twin that always was the one that bailed the other one out. I, I mean... Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't. I, I don't even like it as a human being. I was really, yeah. you know. Hey, I'm over here. I'm going to school. I'm keeping all these secrets. I'm doing all this. Can I get just like? Can I have a dad day out? You know, let's go golf or something. Yeah. Right. Right. Anything. I, just, just, just something to to make it so that I don't feel like I'm the only one in this whole family who has to go to school and pretend everything is normal every day. I think we're I think we're getting to a place where we're gonna see uh you know Jonathan perhaps rebel. I think that would make some sense considering everything that he's going through. Uh, so yeah, I think I, I'm excited about where his character is going. Uh, I, I think too. there's a lot of potential for it. So. I'm I'm really excited that uh, Chris and I next week, one week from today, we'll be actually sitting down and talking to Jordan, uh Jordan Elsass about the show. And Slash I, I, envious. I, I, yeah. checked, I checked in yeah. with him today. I sent him a, a DM on Twitter. I was like, hey, are we still good? He's like, it's in my calendar and all this and that. So I'm like, all right, now we are in his calendar. I was like, ooh. Right. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to ask him what his take on where the character is going. Um, if he even knows anything at all. And if he does know official things, he won't He won't be able to tell us, but still. What his I mean, like, thoughts are. Uh, blink once once for yes and twice for no, right? Just and, spell it out. The people at Warner Brothers don't know how to spell. So if you right, spell out uh, right. that I'm going to be superpowered, then they won't know what you're saying. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> I, I would straight say, here's the cinematography for this, 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 and this, and this. You have superpowers. I know it. You know it. But we're not going to say that you know it. Okay, I'm, but I'm that person. Like... This is why right. I edit everything. <laughs> right. I, I don't know. I think part of me not wanting to edit is the fact that I don't feel like doing it. And number two, though, is we kind of like to see where it goes. And it's just like, let's just put it out there like that. This is fun to watch. Um, eventually, <laughs> if, it, if we get, if it grows and stuff, because there's, if you go back and look, there's little videos like I did in the start. I'm sitting here like, hey, I'm, I'm Joker. Blah, 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 and I'm doing goofy things. I don't know. Uh, I can. I, honestly, I try to entertain myself. I can right, honestly right. say that with Chloe and me editing, it's usually a good thing, because otherwise our videos would never be on topic. Ever. No, never. Yeah. We can have like five that. minute, five minutes on topic, and then like left turn, right back to normal, Somehow right turn back to normal. Always ends on Chris Evans, Sebastian Stan, and Deadpool. I think those are. The Three and things that we always hit somewhere. And mutants. Oh, mutants oh, are mutant. also there. right. Oh yeah, Mac right. Boy. Yeah, Mac Boy and Fast Thunder. Yeah, we 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 it 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 usually has to do with our with our recordings. Like if it, if it's Superman and Lois, it always ends up the same way. Misty's bad because Jordan's being or Jordan's being <laughs> Miss, Miss, Yeah, and Miss, <laughs> uh, Misty forgets like half of the plot. I'm like, no, that's me. It's not that I forget half the plot. The thing about it is, I just, I choose, like, at a certain point, there was a certain point where I couldn't stand Kyle, and I was just go, but, Yeah, like, completely ignore everything that happened in that household, and I'm like, but Misty, that's important. And then she forgot there was a second daughter at one point, and I'm like, yeah, there's, like, the sister, the little sister. She's like, what little sister? I'm like, I, yeah. I ignored that. I ignored that whole household for the reviews for four episodes because I was like, I can't stand Kyle. And every time Kyle opens his mouth, I just 
I tune out. It's I gone. mean, ta- I mean, tag like kidnapped Sarah from the household, and she just like went right over that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Uh, you know that. Okay, that was one thing I liked. I liked. Okay, we're talking about things we liked. Okay, so th- I liked that they had that barbecue, even though mm-hmm. the general was alive. Everybody was alive, and that irritated me. I was like, "Come on, somebody! Any one of these people should have died. You could have killed two mm-hmm. or three third tier characters, and I would have been fine with that." <laughs> but um, I liked that Smallville went from being. We hate the Cushings too. We love the Cushings, and Eddie... well, he makes really good ribs. Well, it, yeah. it did. It did like a whole roundabout because they had the barbecue at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Where it was very closed off Smallville, where Kyle was still accepted, but it was Lois that was the outsider, and the boys were the outsiders. And then they have it at the end where suddenly everybody is Smallville and everybody's happy again and Lana and Kyle aren't the outcasts that they were in between these two barbecues. You and, know? and they it re-put was... the town together and I <laughs> think that camaraderie is the Smallville that we as viewers who are, okay, me, because I'm a diehard Superman fan and, and uh, have been forever and ever and ever. Like, Smallville to us diehards is that family town that Martha Kent baked pies for and and stuff. And that's how I feel about it. Like and and they finally brought that back because mm-hmm. for a lot of this show I was like this isn't okay. Yes, it's representative of the times. That's not the point. Smallville lives in a comic book and we have enough real life going on outside. We want our comic book. Thank you. Mhm. And um, it brought back the comic book Smallville where Clark could feel at home. Clark didn't have to keep saving it from everything. Yes, lots of stuff did come to Smallville. But he didn't constantly have to keep saving Smallville from its freaking self all the time. Yeah. It, was, it was more like there were world problems. Clark would go deal with the world problems. And he'd come home to Smallville or Metropolis, wherever he was. I also, oh, that was another one. I also liked that they, um, we thought early on that Chrissy was just going to be a red shirt character and she was going to be gone. And we thought Lois was going to take over, obviously, the plant or the um, small book is that I really liked they didn't make her a red shirt and that Lois was able to buy into owning the Gazette. Uh, it puts a yeah. good future for Lois um, to make bigger. And keeping them a Smallville is really great because typically Superman ends up in, in in Metropolis at the Daily Planet, and that's where he runs anything. And I kind of wonder if Chrissy will be let on on the secret at some point, much like Jimmy Olsen was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would be interested to see that. I'd be interested to, for them to play on that. Or maybe they'll cast a real Jimmy Olsen, and he'll actually come to Smallville. Um, and Clark actually could work out of the Gazette because... That's where he worked. He was a press reporter. Um, but he does have a farm. He has a farm to run. Yeah. Yeah, he's got he's got the farm. He's he's I think good. I know this is a weird question because I've watched the episode twice. Did they give Chrissy a family at the end? Because every single time you see her, she's now with a little girl in like the last episode to the last half, and it's not the sister. There's just suddenly this other little girl that Chrissy's always with. Hmm. I didn't I, notice it. I don't think I noticed that one. Yeah, I was. I, I was. Go I was, back and rewatch. I know. I was really confused because I had to watch it twice because I thought it was the sister at first because they were all together, but then you see Chrissy by herself with this little girl, and the sister is somewhere behind her mother. <laughs> it might be like like a, a sibling, or it might be just. Chrissy's in Smallville. Who knows? Or if she wasn't a red shirt, they have to retcon it somewhere. Because I, I wonder if that character was not a red shirt to begin with. Um, because right. it was a 50-50 on people actually kind of getting behind that character. And they did. So since they did, they were able to make her substantially important. And mm-hmm. of all the retcons that I've seen done recently in the last three years of things. I wouldn't mind them adding a kid in a normal 
space and calling it a good day. That that would be the easiest, most believable retcon ever. Unlike unlike the Loki story, this guy course course or choreographed your entire last ten years of material. None of it was was real, and he's not the one above all. And you're just like, right? Thanks, <laughs> Marvel. You just ruined it. You should have made it the one above all, but or the beyonder. But nope, we can't do that. We can't make it how it's supposed to be. We have to do this instead. So, um, yeah, that's me. I, I I compare other things to other shows, so I'm sorry. <laughs> See, this is my no, edit. <laughs> we do it too. We do it too. Mm -hmm. um, we do fit right in. Oh, good. I I, uh, I I love this show. It's just I I hope that it's going to keep going because it is such a good premise and powers are no powers for these boys. If, if, if they were to lose them, I, I wouldn't cry because they would still be a great team. And, right. And Lois survives somehow. She hasn't gotten herself killed yet. And you know, they usually don't kill Lois Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see more of the friendship between Clark and Lana because I, every time we see it, they just, it's like, in little tiny pieces of it. And I'm like, can you just give us a real backstory? Just a real one. We want a full backstory. And I know we lived in Smallville, so we got to see them as teens. But I want to see this guy's backstory. Yeah, uh, you know. It's got to be different. Yeah. And there's and it's just the actors, those Tyler and um, I think her name's Emily or Emmeline or something. They they just play off each other very, very well. They're They're very good as if they're real life best friends that you can actually believe and that's not that doesn't happen in a lot of sh in, in, in every show where you can no. just believe that these people have known each other for years and years and and the conversations they have either they're believable because i love superman or they're believable because they're really believable and uh you know they've had more than one conversation with each other they're like hey my best friend is doing this and and you're like hey they remembered <laughs> at Chris's eye, yeah. you're the you're the Superman fan too, so you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what Stephen. I, I see she's MCU, yeah. so when I'm talking to her, I know that I that she's just like, okay, Misty. Yeah, I, mean, I love good. everything because I'm sitting here with a Marvel coloring book and an right. Arrow comic book, right? So, you know, <laughs> so I love all of it. If only you saw my collection of books over here, it'd be fantastic. Yeah. You can't see mine right now because they're in the other room. But I can't even get through the Winter Soldier and and Captain America. It's, Cap, Captain America makes me crazy. I can't stand him in the comic books. I can't. So like every time I turn the page to read him, I'm just like, I hate this. I'm like Chris Evans gave this guy a personality. Like Captain America in the book, in the comic books. Oh my gosh, he's the worst square ever. It, it's like. Do you ever stop being a square in these books? Because he does Language. the same. Clean your room and to take your vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I totally get that. This is your show, and I'm talking. I'd be quiet. No, go. it's fine. No, no. I mean, we brought you guys on the show to talk. Yeah. So you don't need to hold back. Okay. And I know it seems like I don't talk a lot. This is surprisingly how it is in the recording. <laughs> That's kind of how it is with us, too. I'll kind of, right. like, listen, and then I'll, like, say one thing. Like, wouldn't it be cool if they all rode around on pogo sticks? And I realize how dumb it sounds, and I won't say anything for 20 minutes. <laughs> and then. See, I'm just like, Misty, you forgot, like, three quarters of the movie. Can we go back to it, please? And then, <laughs> and then I go, okay, fine. You talk about it. And I... <laughs> And then she does, and I end up using hers anyway, no matter how much I talk. Yeah. No, I, I want to see this. I want to see Smallville grow as far as characters. I really want to see real Lex Luthor come in. And mm -hmm. yes, it may not be John Cryer, but I think John Cryer is Lex Luthor coming in and getting corrupted would be hilarious. They could always bring in, uh, I don't know what her name is, Katie McGrath from Supergirl. I can't think of her mm -hmm. name. But she's another Luther, and she's pretty yeah. evilly. Lana, um, did, she, or, did was it Lana? Lana Luther? Yeah, or Lena? Lena Luther. Lena Luther yeah. Oh, oh no more, no more L names. <laughs> yeah. They keep, they, keep, they, they love their little, they love their alliteration. They really do. It's like uh, Lana Lois, La right. Leslie La. Yeah. yeah, Lana Lois Leslie. Yeah. I know. It's, and, and then Clark. Clark's the only one that is easy to s differentiate. John Jordan. Um, 
I, I really think that it would be cool to bring in Lex, uh, however they bring him in. But it because Lex Luthor, if you're a diehard Superman fan, he fights Lex Luthor a lot. I think it would be interesting to have like the future Lex. It's a clone Lex who's Alexander is what he goes by. And he's got the long red hair and the red beard. I think that would be a good take on it. Cause you haven't seen that in the live action. I don't think. I really think that the, the, the real trick for us would be seeing how John Henry Irons reacts to Lex Luthor. We know that somehow he had gotten the, the technology um, from Lex in the alternate earth. Um, would he would he be friends with Lex? Would they be enemies? I, I kind of wonder how they might get along. Yeah. Currently, last I checked, Lex had sort of redeemed himself, but then he went to jail. Then after he went bad again, I don't know if, what he's doing right now. But he was torturing Kara for a while. Um, Wasn't he essentially like a, a politician? Oh, he was supposed to be the president. He does end up the president for a while, right? The right. actual president. I, uh, you can be a criminal and the president at the same time, apparently, though. So, you know. Uh, so I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can. I don't even want to go down that road. I'm I'm not, not, sorry. No. We, we really do. We really do avoid politics on this show. We, yeah, but, we try. Uh, yeah. At least not Captain America, because Captain America is the worst political person in the world. Uh, yeah. uh, it, I don't know. I, I want to see Lex come back, but I don't want a baby version of Lex, like where Lex is just totally easy to go. I mean... Lex messes with Clark's like Lex specifically messes with Clark's mind like that's his job he mess and, and he doesn't play with Clark like on the Superman level he plays with Clark on the human level he does human things to irritate him right and, I, I, oh oh yeah. oh I'm so yeah. sorry sidetrack they didn't kill off Morgan Edge I'm yeah so excited. yeah he's still he's still there which, which is going to leave it's going to leave the door open for him to cause more trouble later on. Exactly. Maybe, I love uh, I love that actor. He can go ahead. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Morgan Edge redemption arc. I really wouldn't mind seeing that and like somebody right. worse come in and like have to force Morgan like into that side because they didn't leave it. They didn't leave on bad terms, but they didn't like particularly about good terms either it was just kind of there i'm calling it now at the end of season two uh, morgan edge will be at the cushing barbecue i think that will probably happen yeah or living in the <laughs> living in the camp the camp barn like it'll right. be fine right everybody can yeah. join us yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that clark is going to eventually warm up to morgan edge and morgan edge is going to eventually get corrupted by all the love that the kent family has and he's not going to be able to sustain being mad at the world. Right. He's going and to I become also... Uncle Morgan. Uncle Morgan. Uncle Morgan. And then Jordan will be the evil one trying to kill Morgan Edge. And everybody will be like, I hate Jordan. Well, he's trying to kill Morgan Edge. He's such a good dude. Why are you doing this? I honestly could see Morgan Edge coming into the situation to deal with Jordan. Yeah. Um, because, okay, look, as much as I truly, I think there's a part of me that doesn't want Jordan to be evil. I just don't see how you, I don't see how he, Clark can barely control at times his bad attitude. Uh, he even admitted it this season. He he told the general, I he lives with it every day. He has to constantly wage that war with himself. I just don't see Jordan having that magnificent equilibrium that Clark has. And um, because unless he like tethers himself to John and John never gets to go anywhere without Jordan, which Jordan was not so keen on that idea or not. John, John was not so keen on that idea to be the escort around everywhere this season. Um, so I don't see how we get around Jordan not being the antagonist for a season. Um, even if it starts off very small, but he it's very clear that the actor can play evilly and he was very like i i was very sold with his evilly i was very happy mm -hmm. with it so knowing that he can play evil because some actors that play superheroes they're meant to play the superhero that they're meant to play and they're not evil like Ryan Reynolds character. Deadpool is probably the most evil person out there but he's chaotic that you forget that he's evil half the time uh, the uh, the X Men yeah. don't the X Men don't forget it. They constantly try to beat it into him that he's evil, but 
you know, that doesn't always work. He, he he's the anti-hero that we all love, you know. Right. Like that's right. that's who he is. He he he's fully well aware that he's not a good guy, but he's a bad guy who does good things. Like he's fully well aware of it. Oh yeah. yeah. And and then the and then of course you have the anti-hero arc, like so Morgan needs to come back as Team Clark to deal with the anti-hero arc. But I think Morgan Edge coming back would be more believable if it were the fact that Jordan was really the one in trouble and the only, okay, well, I won't say the only one. Clark could never, I don't think, do anything to hurt Jordan, no matter what it was, no matter if Jordan was evil or not. Jonathan, I will not say that. Jonathan will kill him. If it meant saving his saving the world, we saw it. He was willing to kill his brother. So that is absolutely a possibility. But Morgan Edge could be that Kryptonian that could take on a well-powered Jordan and not back down. And believable because he is Clark's actual biological half-brother. And it would still be family. So at least you would have two people. Well, you'd have John Henry Irons too uh, and his daughter. But I don't know... I don't know how much I love the idea of John Henry Irons and his daughter. Mm. Not because it's not a good story, but because you kind of already have these pairing offs. You have Clark and Lois, you have Lois and Chrissy, you have John and Jordan, you have Chrissy or um, you have Sarah and Jordan, you have John and his new girlfriend or whatever. So you already have these pairings and now you have another pairing, but that pairing ends up being three. Like you end up putting three people in different groups and that chemistry is, a it, it's going to rock a boat. It's not going to work mm. and it's going to be weird. And that might be what sets John or Jordan on his terrible path. So I, I don't know how much I love it. I, I, <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that they don't do the cliche story. But yes, that is my garage door, Chloe. It is. You hear it. <laughs> she hears it all the time. I edit this out all the time. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't think it's the actor's fault. I like John Henry Irons. But I don't know where he fits long term. Um, short term. I know he's going to run amok and I think it's going to cause problems for Lois and Clark's marriage and not because it shouldn't because Lois is obviously not the mother of this child. Lois has nothing to do biologically with these, this child or John Henry Irons. But she it's did lose. She lost. She lost a child in miscarriage and clearly was not over it. Right. I think that that dynamic she's going to try to reach out. It might make her uncomfortable even. Uh, being around her. So yeah. I think it's going to be an interesting dynamic to play with for next season. A little worried though. I, I, what I don't want is that adult trope where you start punching at the marriage of Lois and Clark, which is going to happen. I know it is. I've accepted it, but I'm like, okay, fine. We're really going to go there. And we're, and, and the worst part is, is if all these people are alive from alt world which shouldn't that is just weird they i they went so far outside for retcon okay we thought all the worlds were destroyed if all the worlds were destroyed she shouldn't be alive that being said that means evil superman can be alive because evil superman was writing the pod in there that means it's just the multiverse is i guess still there so we hadn't seen it until this episode, but I guess it's still alive somehow. Unless she came from the past, but she was dead in the past. So mm -hmm. her, her dad was barely seen escaping. If her dad was barely seen escaping, how did she get out? Uh, maybe she's an imposter. I thought that the girl, no joke, when they buried um, Jorel's crystal, I thought that that was going to be Jorel's pod landing. Mm -hmm. Not the girl, and I would have been like, "That makes sense. That makes sense that Jor El's in because now Clark's yep. dad is back, and some girl gets out. Like what? And I'm like, no. But 
I know that Lois and Clark's marriage is going to suffer. That's obvious. And I know that Jonathan is probably going to have that girl that is related to Clark's evilly guy, which means John is probably going to get himself in trouble this season. Jordan, who knows? Uh, I still think that Sarah now knows. And she's in John's circle of inner trust, even if if Jordan didn't tell her. But it seems to me like she, like John can't lie to Sarah. Like <laughs> he's one of those people that just can't do it. I think um, the yeah. they they've they've played this up where Jordan has had opportunities to go and tell Sarah what's yeah. going on, and he has avoided it. I really think they're going to play up that that idea that he's kept that lie from her. Um, that that's too much of a, of a tempting drama for them to just kind of, you know, tell us about, Oh, oh I found out about it, you know, already kind of thing. I think it would be hilarious because it, the longer that they wait to tell, um, the longer they wait for the longer it takes for Jordan to admit it. It's something that uh, Sarah could sit there and be like, yeah, I've known for the last 12 months. Yeah, It only took you 11 of them to like get the nerve up to tell you. It, it would be right. something for Sarah to basically see how long it takes him to trust her with the secret. Right. As where John, who doesn't appear, he, he really can't lie to Sarah. We've seen him on multiple occasions where he opens up and talks to her. Um, it would be funny. Yeah. It would be terribly, but it, terrible, but it would be great <laughs> all the same time. Exactly, uh, yeah. What do you want to see, Chloe? You're so quiet over there. It's making me feel like I talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for you and Steve because Chris and I are just like... <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, I don't think Jonathan's told Sarah. Because, I mean, the only thing that Jonathan has ever been able to keep from Sarah or lie to Sarah about has always been Jordan's absences from school. Like he's always made excuses. Um, no matter what they are. I mean, some have been real excuses. I, he's not feeling well when his lungs are freezing. Um, but he's always been able to hide that. So I don't think he told her what happened to Jordan. He probably, gave her a half truth, not the full thing, i.e. he has powers. Um, but maybe because he's the general and it was the person that he dragged out, you know, whatever the reason might be. Um, I probably want to find, I will, probably would prefer Sarah to find out if they aren't going to tell her. Because like you said, he's had so many points in which he could have said something and could have told her and they were all perfect moments and he never did. Just like Clark never told about told Lana, you know, you're kind of going through that same thing. But I would like it to be that she finds out somehow. Um, they have to be careful not to tread on the Smallville version of that. Mm. Everybody in Smallville knew that Clark was Superman at some right. point. Yeah. yeah. Like, obviously, Smallville knows Superman, right? But they don't know that Clark is Superman. There's very few people who do. Right. Um, but we don't want it to be like the Flash, right? Where oh gosh, uh, yeah, it's it's there's a smaller list of people who don't know that Barry Allen is the Flash, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So I, we want to we want to be careful with it. I think that Sarah is very smart. I think she I think she's very observant. She pays attention, and she makes those little comments about him being able to hear things going on in the house. I think that she, I, though nobody has told her. I think she's she's realized that that Jordan is not like there's something different about him. Yeah, and I think it's been since the whole tag situation since yeah. the, the the video. I don't think she's dumb, you know. I think that if anything, she'll find out and she'll probably confront Jordan about it. Um, or she'll find out in a big way who Jordan is. And I kind of would prefer it to go that way rather than mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you who I am because that's almost uh, they've kind of passed all those moments where they could have done it at this point. Their relationship's a bit too far along to just suddenly blurt it out and say it unless it's like how Clark did it to Lois, you know, here I'm actually Superman and will you marry me? You know, that's, you know. I mean, he could just text it to her like I'm super LOL wink. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> but that's just over a message. I have powers, right. by the right. way. 
BTW. BTW. Yeah. They have powers. Uh, so gonna be gone for a while. Don't know where I'm going, but I'll be gone for a while. I'm going back up to mm. the North Pole. I'll be gone for about six years, maybe, learning how to do this. Yeah, learning how to control my powers. I'll be back at some point. It'll be fine. Maybe. Uh, maybe Dad will just teach him in the, you know, Dad will teach him how to do it and make him harvest all the corn. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be smart. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I'm really kind of excited for it as mm -hmm. much as as much as I'm terrified for how Clark's going to deal with it because... I don't like the idea of Clark Kent getting exposed. I never have. It makes me unhappy. It, as a Superman fan, I, okay, unlike Batman, no one could know my secret. You know, whatever. And, you know, Tony Stark, hey, I live here. Uh, the difference this is my address. <laughs> uh, and then he has, <laughs> yeah. Come visit me. And they blow down, and they blow up his house a few times. I think, yeah. I think what we've, what we found out is that. Clark's family is, it's a liability, right? That it, that when it was just Superman by himself, it was, it was very easy for him to keep his secret, but the more people that he's involved in his orbit, mm -hmm. the harder, it, what do they say? One, um, three may keep a secret if two of them are dead. Um, yeah. That's, that's absolutely true. The more people, even, even within your family, that know a secret, the, the more the likelihood it is that it's going to get out. And that's, it's just a matter of time. The, yeah. the bigger part that concerns me is not necessarily Clark. It's more that I think that you're going to run into the situation where Jordan gets exposed and then they think he's Superman. And then it turns into a very big disaster because he gets I hope they don't do the Roswell treatment where they stick him in a thing and they stick him underwater and put him in ice and try and like do all these crazy things to him. Uh, it's kind of what they did to Wade Wilson a little bit uh, in Roswell. It was like a, Wade Wilson's equivalent to Roswell. Um, but I don't think Clark's going to be the one that gets exposed. It's going to be Jordan that gets exposed and Jordan is going to be... I would be shocked if they don't throw him in a jail cell with her tonight and throw away the key. And without the general in the position to protect him, it's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. And it won't necessarily expose Clark. It will just simply expose, oh, you're a Kryptonian that got powers like the rest of them. And now you're a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to get subjected to that horrible whatever they're doing. And it's going to tear Clark into shreds because he he's so lawful but you've seen how it works out for him he he mm. doesn't he doesn't want to hurt anybody but what if it's his own kid and then what if, does he kidnap his own kid from the federal government or or the you know world government or whatever it is to save his kid but then risk exposing himself and then make it look like he's favoring kryptonians which is the whole problem that john henry arts on his world it's this mess. It's a big, big, big mess. It really is. It yeah. really is. Uh, and I, of course, I don't want to see Jordan get tortured. But I mean, look, you, but but do you? But do you? <laughs> no, I don't. You seem I, kind I, of interested in getting him tortured. I kind of just think <laughs> I want to see him evil, not tortured. Uh, more, more, more or less. I just want to see. Okay, now that I've seen the actor play evil, I'm all about him being evil. But it would be just right. like, the different. <laughs> Okay, currently the difference between Jordan being evil and Jonathan being evil, Jordan being evil would make sense and would be easily, it would be easier to tell a storyline. If you make Jonathan evil, Jonathan being evil is the equivalent to being a psychopath or a serial killer because that's what he would be, because that's how he would act, much like Oliver Queen and a Kryptonian. He wouldn't give a crap who died as long as they died for his purpose. And that's an Oliver Queen attitude. And mm -hmm. we've seen how that goes. It's bad. And I, yes, Oliver got away with it and John would probably get away with it for a very long time. But that doesn't mean that one can be explained through superpowers and the other one is actually just a human deciding with, with Kryptonian DNA, deciding to be more Kryptonian than his DNA allows or, or, or suggest and if he has all these underlying powers he would be twice as deadly as oliver queen 
and uh that 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 no so yes of the two brothers absolutely i could explain superpowers being the problem i can't explain jonathan turning off his humanity basically like a freaking vampire and killing randomly like oliver queen and having zero remorse at all for it because oliver not once not in the whole series of that show did he have a second of remorse about killing anybody he stopped killing people but that was only because felicity convinced him to stop doing it it wasn't because he you know on his own accord decided not to be a psychopath anymore or a serial killer he just decided that this is what i'm gonna do and um yeah no 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 we, we've had the psychopath slash billionaire uh avenger uh slash vigilante we don't technically need another one and we still have that girl being the vigilante over in Gotham. No, 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 thank you. Mm -hmm. And unless somebody disagrees with me, that's how I Lance. see it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to explain my, this nice, sweet boy teenager who's the grounding for everybody turning into an Oliver Queen and being free. He'd be scarier than Oliver Queen because if you watch, I when I watch George, Jonathan in this episode when he was ready to when he was going to kill his brother there was no hesitation none zero he didn't hesitate to shoot that and mm -hmm. he didn't have a clue what it was and if he had any hesitation I might have thought it was different but no no hesitation so no 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 I couldn't explain Jonathan being crazy I could explain Jordan going crazy because powers when you add powers to the mix it's like Wanda Wanda was a good person and the powers corrupted her but it doesn't work so well when you try to explain somebody with no powers. <laughs> anyway. Well, I feel like we've done a, a really great job of talking about. Yeah. Uh, ladies, it's been, it's been great having you on the show. We thank you for, for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to do it again sometime. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Have fun with your uh, other two shows. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Next week well, is going to be a big one. Ooh, yeah. Can't wait to see it. I'm going to tune in to see uh, Jordan. Or John. Is it Jordan? Yeah, it's Jordan. Jordan uh, yeah, Elsass. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you got to ask him that question. That's one question I want to know the answer to. I want to know, how the heck does he did not turn his head every time somebody says Jordan? Right. Because right? that's his actual given name. And I would, I, I'd have the world's worst time of it. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, ladies, you guys right. can always you guys can always join us live when we are actually uh, uh, recording, and you oh. can ask questions in the chat. So, cool. yeah. anyway, yeah, you're welcome to do that too. All right, you guys, have a wonderful evening. Thank All you right. for having you us. Too. Thanks for having us. Bye. Hey, take care. All right. Well, that was fun, and I did not want to end this show without throwing up our Twitter information. Yeah. Um, I should have done this when they were still here because I added theirs this week. Um, following uh, at Debates Geek on Twitter to follow and follow them on Twitter to follow them. And really? That's that's how that works. <laughs> um, I'm getting tired because I'm like, it's been a long day. Yeah, but, I bet. But yeah, you can follow them on Twitter. Follow uh, our, us. Um, I'm like, uh, me us me us we people like um my brain is like shutting down you really are tired um well i'm not so much tired i think i've just been staring at my screen and like listening and paying attention and i'm just like oh but yeah you can follow um us at at cj kirk 1979 and at stephen underscore colton and then follow our show at at pod and hard place i'm i'm, I'm thinking out in my head like how do you spell it pod and hard. it's right there on the screen um <laughs> And of course, Mark Guggenheim, who's a wonderful friend of this show and a supporter. And I got to show this off again because he had a huge part in this. Um, I'm really excited to. It's so shiny. It's like reflecting. Um, I'm really. Uh, it was funny when I picked this book up. I was telling my uncle who I was with, I'm like, look at the art style. He looks just like this. And I'm like, this is not a drawing. This is a photograph. <laughs> in my head, though. Um, you thought it was I, painted. Yeah, I thought it was like one of those paintings because there's there was a panel in here where it is. That's probably not the best one, but I'm not gonna flip through every page. Um, there's Oliver here, and so it kind of it's hard to see on uh 
on you know like this but it's the art style is pretty good and a night you know some some comics it'll you know panel to panel it'll change like one panel it'll be like oh he looks just like this guy and then the next one the smallville comic was like that smallville season 11 the first few issues look just like the uh, tom Welling. then the next issue would look like classic you know comic superman it's totally different looks but anyway mark had a lot to do with that and you know of course every day uh, I, I wait and wait more and more for Green Lantern to come out, and with Star Girl, that may be even more excited for the HBO series coming up. Um, hopefully, next year. Now I'm hoping to, b before the end of this year we might see something from it, but if not, early next year, hopefully. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, for sure. And it's been a, it's one of our longer episodes, but it was fun. I think it was a mega episode. We had to talk a lot about a lot more we did we did. and don't forget to tune in to this show next week because as you heard before it's jordan nelsas who plays jonathan kent from superman and lois is going to be on this show next week and i'm it is going to be so amazing oh my gosh yeah i, I don't know i might just be like kind of like tonight where i'm just like listening and going oh yeah i forgot i'm part of this hey right like, <laughs> you better ask some questions no, I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna definitely ask him if if he thinks he has powers and doesn't know it. The whole conversation. I definitely want to bring that up because I want to see his take on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So don't forget to tune in next week, everybody, and follow us on YouTube and Twitter and all that fun stuff. And uh, this episode will be on tomorrow sometime. Um, I'm a little tired, or I would download it tonight and repost to YouTube, but I might just wait and do that tomorrow so I can focus more on it. I'm. I have the I have the Tuesday off, so after I get off work tomorrow evening, I'll have all nights just kind of like relax and do those kinds of things. All right, well, sweet. All right, well, we'll talk to, talk to you again next week. All right, I'll look forward to it. Take care. Yeah, you too. You take take care. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm just like zoning out. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye. Uh, bye. Um, sorry.